And it's been a big week for Kalen Trong. For more on that, we'll send it to the third member of our broadcast crew, AJ Howell. AJ. Yeah, Austin, the Trong twins have been here for a while, but Kalen Trong specifically now moves into the top spot with the most games played at Gonzaga at 144. Now, that's obviously impressive, but of course she had to cap it off the 144th one with her first double-double. Head coach Lisa Fortier says, you know, she plays a specific role in this team, and it's different from the one last year, but it's the role that they need. They trust her. The team feels calm when she's out there, as does Lisa, even though she says she may not always look like it. Kaylin just fits in so many different categories that she's dominant in, but ultimately, Lisa just likes her as a person. Austin? AJ, thank you very much. Stephanie, you talk about Kaylin Trong. She was the player of the year in the yeah. conference last year. This year, both her points per game and her shot attempts per game are down while she's raised her assists per game. So you want to talk about somebody who's sacrificing personal achievements for team success. I mean, number 14. Yeah, just an unselfish player, really sets up her teammates really well, obviously, and just filling that role. You know, last year, Kaylee was out. They needed more of a score to fill in those points that were lost there, but this year, she's distributing and finding her teammates. And make no mistake, she'll still score a two good for 10 points per game. We are ready for tip off here in the kennel. Thanks for joining us on SWX as we get this one started. St. Mary's in their visiting blues, Gonzaga in their home whites, and it is the Zags who win the tip. And this is something we weren't sure that we would see, but Allie Bamberger in the starting lineup, there was a few games there where she did not start for the Gales. Great feed inside from Brenna Maxwell to Eliza Hollingsworth for the game's first points. Zags off and running early, taking the early lead. There you see Zariah Okuso, as here we have a ball tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Gales. Okuso, the leading freshman scorer in the conference, 10 points per game coming off a career-high 19 points just two games ago. Yeah, a great performance there, 19 points versus San Diego. She has three WCC Freshman of the Week performances already. Bamberger tries a three, misses everything. This will be Gonzaga basketball. Bamberger doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but has taken 40 on the year. It's been a tough road for her in that department, shooting just 33%. And you talk about St. Mary's as an offense, they've really struggled to put points up on the board, averaging just 60 points per game, Steph. And I wonder when you have a team, as here we see Maxwell three on the way, no good, but a high offensive rebound by Hollingsworth, kicks it right back out. Kaylin Tronk creates space, three on the way, that one's no good either. Kaylee tips it straight up, the Gales come away with it. Back to my point, when you have a team that doesn't put up a lot of points, they do play good defense, but you're going up against a team that is so offensively excellent like the Zags are. What's What's kind of the game plan? Do you really just try and grind the game down to a haul, or you try and score with them? I think you do. No, I think at this point, St. Mary's does a pretty good job with getting some steals, and they mix up their defenses. We'll play mostly zone, but I think they've got to make this a physical, um, very active defensive game. Other way, here come the Zags. Maxwell mid-range jumper, pure. 4 nothing lead for the Zags, about a minute and a half into the game. See Alcuso bring it up the floor, guarded by Trong. A little Texas on Texas matchup there. <laughs> Alcuso from Amarillo. The Trong twins, of course, from Houston. Skip pass into the corner, three on the way from Whedon. Addison Whedon not able to hit her first attempt. Zach looking to start the game on the run. Kaylee Tron into Yvonne Egypt, her first touch inside the arc. Hollingsworth, corner three, rattles out. Can't quite get it to go. Rebound grabbed by the Gales, they'll bring it up the floor. Yeah, and this is a, the Gales team will mix up their zones. They'll see like a 2-3, 1-2-2. Two, two, two. They'll do a little bit of full court stuff, but it's going to be about three-fourths of the game zone. Alcuso has her shot denied by Egypt. Zags come the other way. Pass into Levon, lays it up, lays it in, 6-0. Ejim run the floor. It's like she almost sneaks behind the defenders and she just sneaks by them really quickly and they don't see her. And then when you've got point guards like Trong that can just put it on a dime for you. Oh, uh, Kaylin just lofted that one with so much touch over the defense. Meanwhile, Gales are able to get on the board. 
for St. Mary's, this is their first game of the week, but it wasn't supposed to be that way. They were supposed yeah. to play in Portland on Thursday. Couldn't get into the airport with all the ice. And instead, we'll play just one game this week. They'll reschedule that game with Portland for Monday. Egypt at the elbow. Jumper on the way. That's good. Ron Egypt showing off the jumper that time. Six and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. The Zags have got out to an 8-2 lead as they ride that 11-game win streak. Pass inside over everybody, but we'll have a foul. And this is going to go against Kaylee Trong guarding Alcuso. Here we get a look at the bucket a minute ago from Yvonne Ejim. So when you're working those zones, the high post is critical, and so is that short corner, and Gonzaga's been doing a nice job of getting the ball, moving the ball around, and finding those soft spots in the zone, and that was just easy. Easy look for Ejim. Kaylee Trong picks up the foul. She'll head to the bench. Callie Stokes in for the first time. Baseline inbound for the Gales. We'll just get this one into Taylor Dalton. Dalton drives. Stokes denies her, kicks it back out. Bamberger swings it. That's Maya Jones who's in off the bench for the Gales. And now this one will be tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with St. Mary's with five seconds left on the shot clock. Mount Hybens also on the floor. And they'll send Hollingsworth to the bench. Gills inbounding right in front of the Gonzaga bench. They get it in. Now Cuso looks at the shot clock, trying to create space. Will drive, gets it off just in time, and buries it. Zaria so Alcuso on the board. Great composure by the freshman and recognizing the clock time. Um, they didn't panic when the Gonzaga defense came out at her and got herself a really nice baseline shot. Ten points per game for the freshman. Egypt has it poked out of her hands, and Maya Jones grabs it. Marys. Here's Jones. Now Dalton at the free throw line, and they'll get her for a travel here. Excuse me, three in the key. So a turnover regardless. It'll be Gonzaga basketball. Seems like early on, St. Mary's has kind of absorbed the early Gonzaga offense as just Egypt just bullying her way to the basket there. Von Egem off to another good start. Yeah, but I think Gonzaga is getting too easy of looks right now. Um, you can't continue to make, give them those because it's just going to get easier for them as they go throughout the game. Absolutely, a team that prides themselves on defense. St. Mary's holds their opponents to just 41% from the floor. Zags shooting above that here at the start. Alcuso with Stokes guarding, drives, goes up and under. Great defense by Callie, and she comes away with the rebound. Other way, Tron. Egypt. And they'll get a bond for traveling here. Take a break and come back. An early 10 4 lead for Gonzaga. You're watching West Coast Conference Rival Reaction Zags and Gales here on SWX. This is eight baskets. Three of them coming from Kaylin Trong. Go to AJ. Now. Back to the action here. Gales will bring it up the floor, trailing 10 to 4. About five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Glad you're with us here on SWX. There's Bamberger with it, and now Alcuso. Feet inside. Mount Ibens skies up, tips it around, and the Zags come away with it. Good help side defense there from Ibens. Yeah, the Zags have just been rocking the scouts. They've really been locking in on the key players of their opponents, and they just make the game's so difficult for him. You can see that all eyes are watching Bamberger, especially down low. Kaylee Trong tripped to the floor. This will be a foul going against Taylor Dalton. Excuse me, actually, Maya Jones picks up that foul. Hybens. I don't know how she held on to that ball, but she did. Moving it around the arc, this one's tipped. Good recovery there by the Gales. Six on the shot clock. Kaylin Tronk steps into a three. Can't get it to go. So the Gales survive after leaving Tronk open. Don't want to do that. Now a skip pass over Alcuso. She'll drive. Mid-range jumper off the iron. Ivan's the rebound. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Here's 
Stokes. Kaylin, now to Kaylee. 15 on the shot clock here. Stokes tries to drive, turned away. Now here's Hybens, five on the shot clock. Hollingsworth. Kaylin Trong, what a feed to Mount Hybens who lays it in. Kaylin Trong putting on a passing clinic, her fourth assist. If you are a teammate of Kaylin Trong, you better have your hands up at all time because if you were even slightly remotely open, she is going to find you. Remember, as here's Callie Stokes tipping it away, the steal, Stokes the run out, the layup is good. And timeout taken by Jeff Kamen, Gonzaga. Out and running early, a 10-point lead. And it is never too early, folks, to name our play of the game, <laughs> which is brought to you by Multigare Health System. Get another look at the great lead by Kaylin Trong. Here you go, Mount. Well, just a nice job of driving through the seam of that zone and making the right read again. And like I said, you better have your hands up because the ball's coming. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. That is our MultiCare play of the game. Another look at it. You can't get enough looks at that. What a pass. Yeah, and just making it easy for her post. No need from out to dribble. Was able to keep it high and just finish in rhythm. So Zag's on a 6-0 run that's lasted over two minutes. They've hit five of their last six shot attempts. Meanwhile, a scoring drought has reached three minutes for the Gales. An early 10-point lead for Gonzaga, who's trying to race out as here's a near steal, and it is a steal. Poked away by Kaylee Trong. Now Hybens was able to grab the ricochet. Hybens, skip pass to the corner. There's Stokes. Under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. It's been all Gonzaga early. Callie Stokes floats this one up high. That'll be a turnover. Alcuso coming the other way. Doesn't have the number. She'll pull it back out. There's Allie Bamberger. Hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. Leia Hannafin with it now. Inside, Hybens guarding Bamberger. Allie drives, tries to create space, goes up, and she'll get the foul. Mount had good defense most of the way, just mm -hmm. got a little too aggressive there going for the block. And you can just see the strength and power by Bamberger there and the ability to put it on the floor as well some, with some good footwork. So early on, St. Mary's just shooting two of eight from the field. On the other side, Zag seven of their first 11. As Allie Bamberger will go to the line. Bamberger is 62% free throw shooter on the year. This is her 40th attempt of the season. And she knocks that one through. Crowd packed in here into the kennel trying to rattle Bamberger's confidence. Esther Little has checked in for the Zags. You'll notice Esther is wearing a mask after being hit in the face a couple games ago. We saw Kaylin Trong yeah. have to sport that <laughs> similar look. Esther's going with the clear mask. Kaylin was kind of like the Dark Knight, you the know, Zor with the, oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the Zorro. That's right. I was saying Zorro. They, yeah, they had a Dark Knight image out there. But Esther coming in, you gotta love what she does. She provides length defensively and does all the little things for Gonzaga. You see, St. Mary's really trying to jump these passing lanes. Zags being careful with the basketball so far. As we say that, a tie up, and this will be a possession that goes to the Gales. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Just you mentioned it, Esther Little immediately going to work trying to chase down ball handlers. Here's Weed. Now Hannah Rapp. Hannah Finn back to Rapp in the corner. Ruby Vlahov with it now, guarded by Hybens. The drive by Rapp. Loses the ball, goes out of bounds. This will be Gonzaga basketball. And Gonzaga defensively has done a nice job of really deflecting the ball. They've had a couple steals, but not a lot of clean offensive possessions for the Gales. Four turnovers for St. Mary's already. Zach having a real 
trouble with the soft press by St. Mary's early. Here we get a foul as Brenda Maxwell blew past her defender. That'll go against Hannah Rapp, her per first personal. Von Egan back on the floor. Scoring those six points early. Right to Ejim at the elbow, kicks it out. Kaylee Trong swings it over, Esther Little. Ejim, what a feed inside, and Hollingsworth can't quite get it to go. And then a travel, though, after pulling down the rebound, Ruby Vlahov kind of stutter-stepped a little bit. They'll get the turnover, so the Zags will get the ball under the basket. And this is where you just see plays of players who have played together for so long. All these fifth years or grads, um, seniors, they've played so many games together, so they know where each other's going to be. Brenna Maxwell can't quite hit the three, but she'll get three free throws out of it. She turned back to the bench and had a frustrated look on her face because she wanted the four-point play. <laughs> We've seen her do that quite often, so not surprising at all that she thought she should have got that one to go. Yeah, she's one of those sneaky little shooters that knows how to get that extra whistle called when she's shooting that three-point. Knocks down the first free throw. About a minute to go here in the first quarter. Second one good from Maxwell. It's kind of been stop and start for the Zags so far. They've absolutely controlled the game, no question about that. But they've gone on a run. St. Mary's has done a good job to stop the offense, but haven't been able to turn it into offense themselves as now all of a sudden find themselves down 11. Meanwhile, a three for three trip from Brenna Maxwell makes her 40 of 42 from the charity stripe this season. Remember last season, she set the Gonzaga program record at the free throw line, 93%. She's just a pure shooter. I mean, you look at her three-point shot, pure shooter. Free throw shot, pure shooter. She's got that mid-range jump shot, pure shooter. Three on the way. That one's good from Addison Whedon. Von Ejim wasn't quite able to get out to the corner in time. And she's one that you don't want to get loose. She's one that can really knock down the threes we did. Uh, she's shooting 44% behind the three-point line in conference play so far. Her sister, Tacey Weeding, last year was a phenomenal three-point shooter, so she's got some of that going for herself, too. Kaylee Trong not able to hit the answer three. 15 seconds left in the quarter here. St. Mary's trying to close with a couple of baskets. Skip pass, Weeding right in front of the Gonzaga bench. Six seconds left, that's Alcuso with it. Soraya Alcuso pulls up to beat the buzzer, can't get it to go, rebound by the Zags, and that will close out the first quarter. 17-9, the Bulldogs go out to a eight-point lead after 10 minutes of play. We'll take a break and come back with the second quarter. You're watching College Basketball, West Coast Conference action right here on SWX. I'm the bad thing that St. Mary's has a little bit of extra rest heading into it. Coach Forte was pretty frank with us. She said, listen, if I'm in a bad mood, then I'm upset that they got to prepare for just us all week. But if not, you just know you can't control everything and you let it happen. Austin. AJ, thank you. Coach Forte also going to be locked in during the game no matter what. Got a feel, Steph, that she's pretty happy after that first quarter. Most thing, More things went right than wrong. For yeah, Gonzaga. I would say so. Very few miscues for Gonzaga. Um, and you know, at this point, with a veteran squad like this, really, if you focus on yourself and do what you do well, um, you're going to be all right. And so that's just a luxury of having all those, <laughs> those veteran players out there. Kaylin Trong opens up the quarter with a three. Reese Salenbein also on the floor to start this quarter for the Zags. We'll tell you more about her here in a minute. Ooh, Alcuso, nice move to get open. Can't hit the shot, though. Rebound pulled down by Trong. Kaylin trying to go end to end. Now here's Ejim, and they're going to get Yvonne again for the travel. Yvonne had no argument on the first one. That time right. a little confused there. Coach Fortier asking for an ex explanation as well. To put it nicely. <laughs> so look into the first quarter stats. Zags held St. Mary's to just three of ten shooting from the field. Obviously, some, some looks that the Gales weren't able to hit, but it's just been smothering defense so far, as we're seeing right now. Right on cue, Addison Whedon mm -hmm. kicks, hits a three. And that's a couple now where Gonzaga's lost track of her, and she was able to get a good, clean look. 
Sailing by his pass tip, but Trong able to chase it down. And now here's a pass that goes out of bounds. Where Maxwell was trying to cut up towards the ball. Trong kind of floated it towards the corner. So a turnover there. Still just an eight-point lead for Gonzaga. St. Mary's nowhere near out of this ball game yet. Put together a couple baskets. They can be right back in this thing in a hurry. Now Cuso. Looking for somebody, Bree Soundbein with great defense, but a great cut by Whedon, she lays it in. And I'm gonna give credit again to Okuso for keeping her composure with all that high pressure on her and then her teammates moving so that she could find them. Eight points for Addison Whedon so far. Great bounce pass, Eliza Hollingsworth, and Ejim able to bounce it off the rim and in. And that was tough for Ejem. She was underneath the basket there. That's a tough angle to get that one to fall. It was a great find by Hollingsworth. Nice little wrap around, bounce pass there. Ejem guarding closely. That was Leia Hannafin who had it. Now it's Bamberger. Hannafin gets it back. Whedon trying, or excuse me, that's Taylor Dalton trying to drive on Maxwell. Dalton picks up her dribble, and they'll get her for an offensive foul. Brenna Maxwell went straight up, and Dalton, mm -hmm. their only move was to essentially push off. Yeah, Dalton's really crafty around the rim. She does like that little up and under, and so nice job by Maxwell to stay on her feet and not bite. Yeah, you'll get a look at it here. Right here, she stays on the ground. Yep. And the hook of the arm. Now Allie Bamberger ties up Reese Allenbein. And we'll get a jump ball. That'll be St. Mary's ball. Crowd wanted a foul there. Let me talk about Bree Soundbine. Go back to her freshman season. After the regular season was over, she had a knee injury before the West Coast Conference tournament started. And with all the rehab and redshirting, they went 51 games between times she was out on the floor. She made her debut earlier this season against New Mexico. It is just so good, Steph, to see her back on the floor, knowing all that she went through. Well, and it just provides more depth for the Zags, right? She's a tall guard. She can run the point, 6'2", and she's a good shooter. So while Esther Little comes off the bench and provides that defensive spur, Marie can provide that offensive spur. Kaylin Trong hits her second three of the quarter. Zags have pushed it back out to 11. And let's just talk about Kaylin Trong here for a little bit. She's got six points and four assists already. She averages about six assists, a little over six assists a game. She is responsible for so many points for this Gonzaga team. It's, it's incredible. As you get a look at the passing, Ejim had the seal, but then the kick and the extra pass there by Salmbine to get Trong the open look. So you just got to love the fact that not only is she looking, she's not just a distributor. She's still looking for her shot as well. And sometimes you have scoring point guards, sometimes you have distributors, but she's doing both. Bamberger goes back to the line, able to hit the first, cut it back down to a 10-point game. Bamberger still has not hit a field goal in this game. But now three of three as she lines up her second of two free throws, not able to get that one to go. You go back to the last time the Zags and Gales played, it was here last season. And the Zags were really keying on Bamberger in that game, held her to yeah. just 13 points. That was here we'll get a foul. Kaylin Trump trying to pull by her defender, was stopped. And, and it's not just the Gales, it's every opponent. The Zags hone in, they've got the scout, they know what they want to, to give and what they want to take away. Strong into Egypt, kick it out, heat check. No good that time, Bree Salenbein skies for the rebound, kicks it back out, second opportunity. No good there either, and then an offensive foul inside on the Zags. I believe they got Von Egypt there. First personal on Ejim. Callie Stokes, Mount Hybens return to the floor. Soundbine and Ejim head to the bench. Zag still shooting well from the field. 56% for the game. They are just two of nine from three. That is something we saw in their last game, a win. They were just four of 14 from distance. And I, I just wonder, as here we see a turnover, this will be Zags basketball. I just wonder, with a team that normally shoots well 
from three. You could probably shake off one tough game shooting. I, I wonder if the struggles persist through two games, maybe three games, when maybe, not doubt, but just uh, just some thoughts of, hey, we're, we're shooting it kind of poorly from three creep in. I don't think that it is. I think what you do is you reassess and you look to establish that low presence a little bit more and maybe some ball movement. And this is, a, again, a, a veteran team. They've got the green light to shoot. And they know what are good shots. Um, so I think you just continue to take good shots. If it's an open look, you take it. Down by 10, St. Mary's with the ball here. Now we got a foul. This will go against Hybens. Second on Mount. And she'll go to the bench as Brenna Maxwell returns to the floor. And this is where you like the versatility of the Gonzaga team as well. So Mount goes out, Eliza's your biggest in there at 6'3", and then Kelly Stokes, who had been playing a wing, now shifts down to the smaller forward position. One thing you gotta love about Callie Stokes, I know Lisa Fourier loves about it, is that she rebounds. Behind Egypt and Hollingsworth, Stokes actually has the third most rebounds per game on this Zags roster. And here's a shot clock violation. That's another turnover. Take a break, Zags doing it on defense. They lead by 10, 25-15 here in the kennel. Have more coming up here on SWX. Done before the assist, right? It's the ball movement, making the defense switch and rotate around. On the other side, 10 turnovers for St. Mary's. It's been kind of a sloppy game in that regard on both ends as Gonzaga also has eight, but Gale's doing themselves no favors turning the ball over. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Zags lead by 10. Austin gets Stephanie Hawk Freeman, AJ Howell joining you on the SWX broadcast. Tight defense there. Kaylee Trom gets it over to Kaylin. Those two go back and forth. Pull up three by Kaylee. Can't get it to go. Callie Stokes tipped it. It goes out of bounds. It'll be St. Mary's basketball. And really, if you're Gonzaga right now, you know anytime you catch the ball, pressure's coming. Not just from one, Gil. It's coming from multiple. So you've got to be ready. You've got to know where you're going next. You've got to have teammates that are moving and cutting and getting open. That was your key to the game. you got to beat the trap. Mm -hmm. Here's Addison Whedon. He's had a good start to this game, eight points. Zariah Altuso with it now. Whedon left alone, lines up a three, buries it. Addison Whedon already in double figures as she knocks it down, her third three of the game. And now a turnover, almost a turnover, I should say. Zariah Altuso jumped the passing lane, but her momentum carried her out of bounds. Yeah, Addison Whedon, three for four on the night, 75%. Again, too deep, sucked in too deep on that offside defense there by Maxwell, and it wasn't able to get out quick enough to challenge that three. Keep in mind, earlier this season, Wheaton set a new career high with 15 points. She's well in range of that. Here's Brenna Maxwell. Jones. Maxwell, three on the way, good. <laughs> Just making up for that last three there. Absolutely, continues her streak. She's hit a three-pointer in every single game so far this season. And pushes the lead back out to 10. Right when St. Mary's, a couple times in this game, they've made some baskets. Gonzaga has been able to answer. We haven't seen a big run like we had earlier in the first quarter that forced the timeout, as here's another turnover. And maybe the start of a run here. Trong, Stokes, Callie drives, puts it off the window. Can't quite get it to go. Bamberger the rebound. Three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Alcuso spins, puts it up, can't get it. And Stokes skies for another board. Kaylee Trong in transition, drives. Trong navigates the paint. And this shot is going to be draw a foul. As Trong went right in there. No, no yeah. fear in there. No. <laughs> Maya Jones picks up her second foul. Maxwell to the bench. Free sound line returns, and it'll be Kaylee Trong at the free throw line. Seventy-seven percent coming into this game by Kaylee. As a hush falls over the kennel, he hits the first. Oh. 
Second is good. It's good to hear that net. Uh -huh. And we've talked about individual free throw shooters on this, but as a team, Gonzaga's shooting 80%. That's eighth in the nation. It's, it, it's, it's absurd how good they are. Incredibly, though, that's only second best in the in the WCC. They're just right behind Santa Clara at 82%. So, again, you can't – there's – very few flaws in this Gonzaga team. Like you can't foul them and send them to the line because they're gonna get the points there as well. Really well-rounded team. Five seconds left on the shot clock here. Here's a tip and Kaylee Trongo and Bamberger's gonna have to let it go. Kind of got a running start there. Missed everything. That'll be a shot clock violation. Great defense there by Kaylee Trong. She poked it away and didn't allow Bamberger to set up for that shot. Zags. Kaylee, right in front of the bench. Stokes kicks it out. Kaylee splits the double team. Kaylin creates space. Step inside the arc and knocks down the mid-range. Kaylin now with eight points. Ejim also with eight. And Kaylee with two. 14-point lead for Gonzaga. It's their biggest of the game so far. Here's Whedon. Dalton with it now, 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Hannah Rapp now. Zags playing good defense, and Egypt just denying Bamberger any looks inside. Here's Leia Hannafin, kick to the corner, three on the way from Rapp. That one's good. St. Mary's doing just enough from behind the arc to stay in this game. Yeah, they're shooting really well. Four for seven at 57% right now. What a display of passing there. Callie Stokes had that ball in her hand for less than a second, kicked it back out, and Strong hit the three. Quickly, the other end, Dalton can't get it. Sound by the rebound. Here come the Zags, 90 seconds remaining in the first half. And you talk about taking the wind out of the Gales. They get a little momentum, they get an open three, but, but you know, the last couple times, Gonzaga's come right back and answered themselves. A steal from Leia Hannafin leads to a easy basket for Hannah Rapp. For Hannafin, she leads the West Coast Conference in steals per game more than two per contest. That one led to a basket. Cuts the lead back down to 12. Ready to go here in the first half. Egypt. Trong, a three on the way. Can't get the friendly roll. Egypt right there to put it back home. Even when they miss, they've got Egypt down there. Yeah, and, and it wasn't just Egypt too. There was two or three Gonzaga players down there crashing the offensive boards. Mary's just trying to cut this lead before the half. Whedon another three. Buries it again! Wow. 14 points from Addison Whedon in the first half. Definitely going to be an adjustment at halftime there to make sure that they're not leaving Whedon, <laughs> not going as far into the paint on that help side. 10 seconds left, shot clock is off. Ejim at the elbow. Now five seconds, kicks it out. Extra pass, Kaylee in the corner. Got it! And that'll end the first half. Another assist for Kaylin, another three from Kaylee. And the Zags take a 14 point lead into the break. 40-26 over their rivals from Moraga. As you'll get another look, watch the extra pass here from Kaylin. Kaylee lines it up. That one was good as soon as it left the hand. Yeah. 14-point lead for Gonzaga here at the end of the first half as we're waiting for head coach Lisa Fortier and A.J.'s got her. A.J.? Hey, Austin. Coach, 14-point lead at halftime. Is that where you want to be right now? Are you happy with the performance that you've seen? Not really. I hate to sound picky, but we're giving up too many threes, and we're not keeping them in front of us by, on the dribble. So that's how they're getting them is we're having to help, and then they're kicking out. So I would rather them not have 26 points, and I realize that that's a lot to ask, but I think we've – we just got to do better defensively. Then offensively, you guys not having the success that you normally do from three, do you keep shooting or you just go with what's been working? Yeah, I mean, it's tough in the zone. There's a lot of threes, and, and they're the kind that everybody knows they're going to be in the zone the whole time. Everyone thinks that just because a team is in a zone, there's going to be a bunch of open threes. And I think that they're they're active. It's more like a man-to-man. -man. So, um, you know, I think we definitely we have good shooters. We want to keep shooting them, but we want to make sure we're getting the ball inside first instead of just pass, pass, pass around, and then try and shoot a three. That's a more difficult kind of shot. Thank you, Coach. And thank you. Austin? AJ, thank you very much. Lisa Fortier, always going to be the highest critic of her team, but also <laughs> the highest supporter. We'll take a break, come back with your hat. 
And you know, Austin, going to that too, when we look at these, out of the 15 makes of Gonzaga, you mentioned that 12 of them were assisted. You look at, you've already got Ejim, both Trongs and Maxwell. Ejim's in double digits, but the other three are knocking on double digits already. Really, we didn't need some help from the Gales, and we talked about how Bainberger could be that person, but they've got to get someone else going. They are just denying her any kind of entry passes. They have made it, and you mentioned the scout, made it their mission. Mm -hmm. We are not going to let her get the ball in the low post. The only time that I can even recall her touching it had been outside the arc. So here we go, second half underway as the Zags lead by 14 at the break. Kick out, Kaylin Trong looking to start off the second half with a three and she does. So once again, the importance of that high, the free throw line right there, getting it into that middle kind of part of that zone. The defense has to suck in and then you've got sparklers all around you. I mean, you've got shooters. There you see the defense on Bamberger. She's in the middle of the paint there. Ooh, nice move. They get it inside to her. She has to kick it out. Alcuso, mid-range on the way. No good. And Eliza Hollingsworth fights for the rebound and gets it. And I thought Bamberger, if she would have recognized she had a strong guarding her, I think she could have kept that ball and actually put it up. Yvonne Ejim. Trong, another one on the way. Can't get that one to go. Tip straight up. Eliza Hollingsworth, a great rebound. Kicks it over to Trong. Can't get it to go off the front of the rim. Goes out of bounds, this will be St. Mary's basketball. Wasn't able to get the shot to go down, but it's so good to see Hollingsworth fight for those rebounds. She is actually eighth in the West Coast Conference in rebounds per game, but she's fourth in total rebounds. Miscommunication there by the Gonzaga defense, but Hannah Rapp was not able to capitalize. Brenna Maxwell, step back, three on the way. Oh, Brenna Maxwell pushes the lead out to 20. Talk about Brenna Maxwell shooting 43% behind the three-point line. That's 28th in the nation, number one in the WCC. And what's incredible is that she not only opens, hits the open ones, but she makes the tough ones like that. Taylor Dalton able to answer for the Gales' first basket of the second half. For Gonzaga has pushed the lead out now, close to 20, was 20 a minute ago. Yeah, good response by the Gales to handle that pressure, moving off the ball to get that easier look. And this will be a turnover. Kaylin Trong looked like she might have had a chance to line up that three, but she was trying to hit Maxwell on the cut. Here's the Maxwell three a minute ago. And just needs no time or hardly any space to get that three-pointer off. Allie Bamberger able to draw the foul on Eliza Hollingsworth. She'll go to the line again. St. Mary's making more of an effort, I think, in this half so far to get the ball into the paint, whether or not it's a wide open, clear lane, you know, just trying to get something moving. Leah Hannafin back on the floor for the Gales as Bamberg goes to the line for her third trip to the charity stripe in this game. down the first. There's two minutes gone here in the third quarter. Zags started out with a couple of threes. St. Mary's went through for the basket and now a trip to the line for Bamberg. She makes it. She's five of six in the game. See St. Mary's, that defense just lurking, looking for chances to trap Gonzaga ball handlers. Here's Ejo. Maxwell, quick release three. High off the back iron. Offensive rebound, another one for Hollingsworth, and that'll lead to a foul. You see Eliza just using that 6-3 frame mm -hmm. and those long arms. Sometimes if you don't come down with it, you can at least lead to good things happening if you get your hands on it. Yeah, she's getting herself in the mix there, and then rewarded with her efforts for a three-pointer. Just another person that, oh yeah, she can shoot it too. Yeah. <laughs> Anna Finn looked at a three, instead gets it off to Alcuso. Pass inside, Dalton reverse layup, can't get it to go. But an offensive rebound allowed by the Zags. Now blowing by Whedon, lays it up and in. A new career high for Addison Whedon, 16 points in the game. Strong to answer. Oh, she rattles it home. 
it really has been so difficult for the Gales because, like I said, every time they seem to get like a little break, an easier bucket, or they make a three, Gonzaga has had a response. And a timeout taken by Jeff Kamen. 20 point lead just like that for the Zags as they're scorching the nets from three here in the second half. Yes. 50 and Mark Few picks up win number 700. There are not many programs, around, or I should say schools around the country that have such a good men's and women's program. A lot of that also go back to Kelly Graves, the uh, head coach before Lisa Fortier. Coach Fortier has continued to build on that success. But how interesting is that? The milestone for those coaches yeah. coming on the same night. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, but talk about what Lisa has done with this program. And, you know, she's been named WCC Coach of the Year four times. You know, she's got an 80% winning record. I mean, it's incredible. And, and talk about the atmosphere, being able to keep these fans engaged and um, what a place to play. Yeah, we asked her this morning if she remembered win number one. Yeah. She did. It came in this building on November 16, 2015. They overcame a halftime deficit to Dayton to end up beating the Flyers by 10. That was win number one, 249 later. Lisa in good position to go for 251. Back on offense, the Gales trying to just stay in this game. Allie Bamberger able to get her first field goal of the game as she's able to lay that one up and in. And it was one of those where she was almost so open she, that it wasn't a clean make. It kind of sat there for a little bit. This foul will go against Leia Hannafin. Yvonne Ejim draws it. Mount Hyben's back on the floor for the Zags. Eliza Hollingsworth will get a breather. Fans chanting they want tacos. Zags have hit nine threes in this game. Ten will get a little Taco Bell action. Here's Addison Wheaton. Kicks it to the corner. Kayla Dalton drives. Goes to Bamberger. Kick out. Alpuso for three. Gets the friendly roll. And she could be, she is a key. That's five points. She averages 10. She's the only other player besides Bamberger that averages double points for the Gales. Again, we mentioned this earlier, a three-time WCC Freshman of the Week. But really having a hard time tonight finding easy buckets. Yeah, Zags have done a good job on her. Meanwhile, Avon Ejim drives on Allie Bamberger and forces her to foul. Now it's just her first. And it'll put Avon Ejim on the line, as that is the Uh, foul that'll send her to the free throw line. St. Mary's has cut it down to 15. Zags looking to stretch that a little bit. And it was strange because you heard kind of the tone of Lisa Fortier and, it, and how St. Mary's kind of closed the half. It, it didn't <laughs> feel like a 14 point lead, but bing bang boom, all of a sudden they, they push it out to 20. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a team that wants to make a deep run in March, and so they're looking at every little thing. And to be a, a championship team that goes deep in March, you have to remain focused for the full 40 minutes. And I think she thought that they lapsed in a couple of those areas. And so taking her team into halftime and say, hey, let's refocus, let's work on these few things. For more on that, we'll send it over to AJ Howell. AJ. Yeah, guys, when head coach Lisa Fortier was talking about her 250th win or just, I guess, most of those 250, she was saying, you know, this team wants to win them all. They just want to get better, and they don't really look at the opponents as anything different. She talked about facing several number one teams when they did, and they may not have gotten the win, but what they learned from that and just how they approach every game the same as they head towards March. Take a break and come back. Zach's up 15 here in the third quarter at the count. Yet though, Stephanie Hawk Freeman, as the Gales have made their last four free throws, or excuse me, four field goals, and have cut the lead down to 15. Still comfortable margin for Gonzaga, but you want to see more from them, and they want to pull away. And it kind of feels like they are, are in the mood to 
to win and win big all throughout the conference. Of course, everything's going to help with that resume come March and, yeah. and the seating committee and all that. And so not surprising to see the Zags not, not pleased with the 15-point lead. Yeah. They want more. Well, yeah, and you look at the response in the third, the Gills, you know, they're, they're just a point behind in Gonzaga in scoring in this quarter, and they're shooting at 60, if you round up, 63%. Now, Cuso will get called for the offensive foul. Brenna Maxwell once again putting her body on the line and getting run over there, and it leads to a turnover. Maxwell is really great at reading that. She, time and time again this season, we have seen her take a charge right there in that arc area. And she gets her feet set, and she reads it perfectly. Callie Stokes back in the game for the Zags. Here's Von Ejim. Ejim drives, dumps it off. Hybens rips it away, and they will get three in the key on mm -hmm. Hybens before she was able to get that shot up. That's the second three in the key call we've seen. One went against the Gales, one's gone against Gonzaga. And now we have a foul at center court. Brenna Maxwell not happy. They called the foul on Callie Stokes, but it was Maxwell who had the disappointed reaction. Just the first on Callie. Pass inside and a turnover. So Zags will get it back. <laughs> I don't think Maxwell's the only one. Each of them showing a little bit of emotion out there. Most of the time, pretty cool, calm, and collected. You don't see a lot out of her. And she's getting a little vocal about it, too. Zags looking to capitalize. Kaylin Traum. Looking to start the action. Here's Mount Hybens. Hybens picks up her dribble. Back to Trong. Inside to Egypt. Egypt guarded by Wheaton. Drives. She'll get fouled. So before the pass to Mount Hybens. So Lon Egypt. As you can see her coaching up her teammates there. That's the second foul on Wheaton. Keep that in mind as she's kind of I want to say single-handedly, but really played a major role in keeping this game close enough to where St. Mary's is able to keep the belief, Steph, of knowing, hey, a couple more baskets, maybe a 6-7-0 run, we could be right back in this. Yes, yeah, she's had a great game so far, 16 points, 6 of 7 shooting. The next highest scorer for the Gales is Bamberger with 7 points. Lon Ejim hits her first free throw. She was two for two on her first trip and two for two on this one. Came into the game as an 81% yeah. free throw shooter. When she came to Gonzaga, she was not a great free throw shooter. Just another era where, or area, I should say, where you really work, you really put the put the work into it. And you know, that can be an extra, you know, jumping your free throw percentage that much, that can be an extra two, three, four points per game. Well, yeah, and you look at that's why she's averaging over 20, 20.5 20 points a game. Again, 18th in the nation right there. You talk about being effective, you know, she's made 168 shots on the season. That's only second to Caitlin Clark at Iowa. Pretty good person to be uh, second to. Kaylin, pull up three, buries it! <laughs> And the kennel comes to its feet on that one. St. Mary's trying to answer, and a three goes down from Maya Jones. Lead still 17 for Gonzaga here with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And if you really kind of look at it, so far it's been that first quarter that really got St. Mary's buried a little bit in a hole, and they just haven't been able to come out of that. Yeah, it's it just, it's so impressive to watch the, the Gonzaga team. I feel I feel like, as here's, you'll get the three that gave the folks tacos here at the kennel. Uh, it's so impressive to see way more games than not how fast these guys start. Gonzaga I'm talking about. Uh, you know, and obviously if you get out to a run in the first couple of minutes of the game, you have a long ways to go, but it just helps so much when you get a team down early and you kind of control the flow of the game from then, then on out. Well, yeah, and if you look on the season, in the first quarter, Gonzaga's outscoring their opponents 404 points to 266. I yeah. mean, you talk about that big jump right from the get-go. Um, and then just... Those veteran teams keeping the gas pedal pushed down. You want to keep going. 
extending that lead. You don't want to get lulled or lackadaisical, right? You don't want the teams to come back, and you want to finish strong. You don't want to pick up any bad habits, right? And so I think that's what Lisa is really in tune with, uh, Coach Fortier, where she's keeping her team focused and saying, hey, hey, we slipped a little bit here. We need to tighten that up. Another turnover by St. Mary's. That makes it 17 in the game. Callie Stokes hangs in the air. This shot blocked. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Gonzaga basketball. Bamberger got her hand on it, knocked it away, and then it went out of bounds. Esther Little and Avon Ejim set to come back in the game. Twenty seconds on the shot clock for the Zags to work with here. Tron into Eliza Hollingsworth. Eliza drives, turns, kicks it out. Kaylin. Now over to Bree Salenbein, who's also back on the floor. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Little into Ejum. Five seconds. Pass. Extra pass. Salenbein. Corner three. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Alcuso. She's trying to come the other way with it quickly. Has to pick up her dribble, but finds Taylor Dalton open. Back to Alcuso here. Less than two minutes to go in the third quarter. Three on the way from Jones. It's off the back iron. No good. Zags continuing to try and pull away here. Up 19. Inside, Ejim sealed off her defender and lays it in. And if you just watch these Gonzaga players, their composure on the floor offensively, you don't see a lot of panic. Um, and they know where each other's spots are, right? They're looking for each other. They're making their reads. They're looking through their uh, runs. You know, first look, second look, third look. And um, that's just, again, your veteran team who all these players have played so many minutes with each other. Get Bree Salenbein for a travel there. It'll be a turnover. You don't see players really emotional. You're not seeing the highs and lows of them emotionally. This is a very just calm and cool, collected team um, on the outside, at least from the exterior. You can see. St. Mary's not quite desperation mode yet. Ooh, there's a nice little pass inside, and Ruby Vlaha lays it in. But you're getting to a point now as we're coming down to the last couple possessions in the third. St. Mary's is going to have to make a stand. They're, they're coming along on offense. It's been a struggle. They're starting to find some more baskets, but they just they have to stop Gonzaga if they want a chance. Here's another foul. This is going to be Yvonne Ejim going back to the line. But that's everybody's problem. How right. do you, how yes, do you exactly. stop this team? It's <laughs> not a problem unique to them. <laughs> you know, they have five players averaging double digits. Um, and you've got very effective shooters. You've got a team that's sharing the ball, moving the ball, making defensive sh shift around. So, you know, where do you start? Where do you begin? Ejim goes back to the line, knocks down the first one. St. Mary's going back to them on offense. They've hit seven of their last eight. But again, Gonzaga is just getting points essentially at will as now we'll have a foul on the inbounds pass. The St. Mary's will line it back up. Alcuso bringing it up the floor. And just left alone back there is Dalton. So Gonzaga's got a little bit of an issue right now on defense, Steph. I mean, that's eight of the last nine makes from St. Mary's, and not many of them have been contested. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. That's going to be an, an adjustment there. Um, like you said, non-contested looks, easy looks. St. Mary's was trying to hunt Kaylin Trong there. Ten seconds left. Oh, what a pass inside. Ejim not quite able to line up a shot. Salamai picks up her dribble. Ooh, dumps it off. Ejim, it's kicked out. Trong to beat the buzzer. Oh! Breaks it in! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> When you're hot, you're scorching. 20 point lead for the Zags. Off a ricochet, catching fire, Kaylin Trong having a day here at the kennel. And plus closed the third quarter. Kaylin Trong, man. Nothing you can do if you're St. Mary's there. No. She's going to hit that kind of shot. Yeah, I mean, talk about a clutch at the buzzer. I've got her down as 
hitting a buzzer beater in the Washington State game to send it into overtime. I've got her hitting a buzzer beater to send it into overtime for the Eastern Washington game. Yeah. I mean, if the clock's winding down, get the ball in her hands. Absolutely. Got a foul of change here. A foul that was charged to Callie Stokes has now been charged to Brenna Maxwell. No one in foul trouble for the Zags. Nobody with more than two. So good to know, but no reason to worry if you're Lisa Fortier. So down 20, St. Mary's, who finally had some offensive success in that quarter, has to just feel dejected, especially Zags with six of nine from three in the third quarter, so uh, for the game, they're now 11 of 23, a much nicer 48% after really not having a good mark at the end of the first half. Well, yeah, and you look at the Gales third quarter, they shot 69%, they really closed the gap with points in the paint, but yet Gonzaga still extended their lead by six. Destiny Burton on the floor to start this fourth quarter. Another player who battled her way back from injury. Salenbein drives baseline and will be fouled on the way. And Burton, while she doesn't come in, she's just listed at six foot, so a little bit undersized for a center forward, but she comes in with a lot of strength. She's able to move bodies out of the way. Um, she's another key piece to Gonzaga going really deep in March. The foul a moment ago as Salenbein lines up a three. Can't get it, Ejim tips it up to herself and there another foul. Von Ejim is drawing fouls left and right. The previous foul before this one went against Bamberger. That is her third. The foul just now was against Hannah Rapp. Or excuse me, Ruby Vlahov. So Zag just controlling possession here. Kay Lee Trong. Salenbein. Over to Esther Little, inside, Egypt battling Alcuso for position, can't get the shot to go, it goes out of bounds. It'll be Gonzaga basketball. They still hold on to possession here, about a full minute into the fourth quarter. We'll keep our eye on Kaylin Trong, see if she returns in this fourth quarter. She's got 22 points as there's Ejim just beating her defender on the inbounds pass, laying it up and in. But let's talk about that pass by Lee there. She throws it in a space where only her teammate Ejim can grab the ball. She leads her teammate to the open spot. Ejim now with 20, so Kaylin, Trong, and Avon Ejim both with 20 points. Kaylin actually with 22. Her season high is 23, so a chance to set a new personal best this season as Avon Ejim gets a steal. Zag's really just pouring it on here. Kaylee. Oh, a Euro step move and laid it in. Kaylee showing off the moves as well. Zags well in control of extending not only this win streak, but this home win streak dating back to last season if they are able to hold on. And it's looking all but likely as Alcuso knocks down a three. That would be 29 in a row here inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. Alcuso, she has been tough. For a freshman, she's had to step up big. The ball's in her hands a lot, but she's knocking down some shots. She's getting herself up there in the score column. She's going to be tough, especially, like I said, a freshman, so uh, several more years with her. Salamine over to Destiny Burton. Burton pulls up. Kind of lofts that one over the top. Egypt's got it, and reverse layup. And Egypt's with 22 now. I truly think that was a pass by DB. I think it was too, but it looked like a shot. It did, but I don't. I th she. It was so short. Yes. I mean, sometimes you see an air ball that's barely short. That was so short. I'm gonna give DB the assist on I that one. I am too. Salenbein. Oh, ho, ho. Zach pouring it on now, extending the lead out to 26, and they're about to empty the bench. Timeout taken by St. Mary Zags. In control here. The 17th team in the country as we see Kaylee Trong dance her way to the basket. Taken over there. 
off to a good start in what's been a really fun Big Sky Conference season so far. Here in the West Coast Conference, it is the Gonzaga women looking like the top dog once again with no competition in terms of where they are playing at right now. They are just a force to be reckoned with, Steph. It's just too many weapons, too deep. Teams just cannot stick with them for the full 40 minutes. And it's hard to take away one thing when you've got four other weapons on the floor. Mount Hybens picks up the foul. Kaylin Tron, who had sat for the first portion of the fourth quarter, is back on the floor again. Another bucket from her would set a new season high. She's got 22, her season best is 23. Taylor Dalton blocked by Brenna Maxwell. Tron's career high is 27. That came last season. Hollingsworth kicks it out. Kaylin Tron calls for a ball screen. Maxwell. Back to Tron, 15 on the shot clock. Hollingsworth left all alone at the elbow. Takes kind of a set shot, not able to get it. Chases down her own rebound and then gets fouled. And it'll stay with the Zags. Well, actually, I believe, oh no, it will, it will. Jump ball, not sure exactly what happened. What I do know is that it's the Gonzaga, <laughs> Gonzaga basketball here. We've got that much. Hollingsworth steps into a three. Can't get that one to go. Maxwell tips it straight up, but St. Mary's able to come down with it. Gale's trying to get out and run. Here's Whedon, who's had a great game. Addison Whedon, top performer by far from St. Mary's in this game. Hannafin, Taylor Dalton with it now. Whedon inside, ball poked away. Goes back to Whedon, seven on the shot clock. Dalton. Tries to drive, Taylor Dalton, and will pick up a foul here as Mount Hybens gets her on the arm. That is the fourth on Mount, and it'll put Taylor Dalton on the line. Fourth free throw, no good. Zags Proud, who has had a lot to cheer and has packed the kennel once again. Still very much into this game. Yeah, and I was kind of curious to see what kind of turnout there would be today, especially with the roads and the kind of the freezing rain this morning. But the faithful, they show up, and hey. that's what makes this program so special. Hey, man, if you got to take a dog sled to get into the kennel <laughs> to watch this team, you got to do it. This is. They find a these, way. These guys are up to something special. Trong. Got it! 26 points, Kaylin Trong. Her best game so far of the season. 26, and don't forget the six assists she's got as well. Zags shooting from three in this second half is impressive. Eight makes from behind the arc. So Austin, you were asking me in that first half, right? The three. Struggling a little bit, huh? Does that is your question? I think it answered. Right you gotta keep shooting. <laughs> shoot or shoot. Trong. Pump Thought fake. About it. Yeah, she did. Skip pass. Maxwell will try from three. Of uh, course. Of course. Make it nine made from behind the arc in the half. These guys can shoot the lights out. They really can, and I mean, it's not just one or two players. I mean, you're looking at four or five players that can hit the three at a very high clip. Nice play there by Taylor Dalton, gets the bucket and the foul. So she'll go to the line for the bonus. Here, you get a look at Brenna Maxwell's three. That literally looks like, have you ever seen those robots that like have the perfect shooting form, so they make it every time? Britta, Britta, Britta yeah. Maxwell, yeah, I think, would outshoot those robots. Yeah, if you want to look at a fine three-point shooting form, that is Britta Maxwell. And at the speed and rate that she gets it off at. Mount Hyman's picked up the foul, so her night is done with that being five. Claire O'Connor, the freshman in the game, had the ball there for a minute. Trong lines it up. Oh, can't get that one to go. Destiny Burton fights for the rebound. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Zags. So Kaylin Trong with 25 points now. If she hits another three, that would set a new career high. 
Her previous career high came last season. Eliza Hollingsworth for three. Back of the iron, no good. Taylor Dalton chases down the board. Emily Foy in the game. She lines up a three for St. Mary's. Can't get it to go. Kaylin comes away with the rebound. Four minutes still to play here. Hollingsworth, another three-pointer. Can't get it to go. Tough night shooting from three for Hollingsworth. That makes it just one for five behind the arc for Eliza in this game. Playing defense here on Hannafin. Sorry, go no, ahead. No, 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 you're right. But it's not like she's missing them, um, you know, way far off. They're yeah. just barely bouncing off. They're really soft. Taylor Dalton has quietly matched Addison Wheaton with both of those players having 16 each. Destiny Burton, mid-range jumper, good. DB checking in with the make. And if you look at the Gales team, they're a young team too. And you've got to remember that this is Jeff Cameron's first year, right? So a whole new system for these veteran players that have been here. But he's trying to work in his sets and his look, his defensive strategies. And this could be, we're seeing some players step up. We've seen Whedon make some, Dalton can put up points, Okuso, and then you got Bamberger inside. This is a team that could, by the end of the year, really have, uh, you know, a pretty strong team. Yeah, it's, a, it's about laying the foundation. And Jeff Kamen had a lot of success six years at Long Beach State before he came here. He actually played in this gym last year with the beach when they came to face Gonzaga. So it takes time. I mean, not, you know, Gonzaga didn't have immediate success when they started. It takes time to build a program. Claire O'Connor drives, not able to hit. Destiny Burton just fighting for these rebounds. Fall away shot, DB hits it. And we got a timeout for Lisa Fortier just to get some subs yep. in the game. We'll stay here. Mount Hyman's actually is back on the floor, so must not have fouled out. That's my apologies. Bree Salenbein also back on the floor. We get a look at Dusty Burton's bucket here. So just sticking with it, not getting the first one, but not keeping herself within the mix, right? Battling in there. And that's a couple, that's the second little baseline jumper that she's hit, and those are tough to hit. That's a tough angle. So out on the floor right now, you might get a look at some of the future for Gonzaga. Outside of Destiny Burton, who's a senior, you've got Mount Hyman, Bree Salenbein, Claire O'Connor, and Callie Stokes, all players you would imagine would be back next year. You add in players like Ella Hopkins, who's redshirting, Lauren Whitaker as well, and here's the pass inside. Peyton Muma, Esther Litter, and some others. You, you know, you talk about this outstanding Gonzaga senior class or mix between seniors, six years, graduate students, however you want to phrase it, players that will be done after this year. But you look and the cabinet's going to be far from bare. Plus, Lisa Fortier has <laughs> yeah. proven recruiting not an issue for her. Bree Salenbein nice. drives coast to coast and lays it in. And that's the aggressiveness that you want to see from Bree. We talked about she can put up numbers, getting more confidence every game after coming off that injury. I mean, if, if that's just something, if, if you can't cheer for that, there's a nice play by Claire O'Connor for the block. Then she gets on the floor and Destiny Burton pulls it away. Nice effort play by the freshman from Bellevue. But you talk about Salmine, if, if you can't cheer for somebody missing, you know, shy of two years, yeah. rehabbing, all the work that you have to go through, coming back from an injury like that, learning to trust your knee again, mm -hmm. getting out there and playing full speed without thinking about it. Mount Hyvins wins a battle for position, can't get the shot to go. I mean, just re something really cool to cheer for. There's a lob inside. Destiny Burton showing some great hustle getting back and tipping that one away. I think the coaching staff of Gonzaga is really going to like what they see out of number one when they watch this film back. Yeah, she is. All that extra effort. And then also O'Connor getting on the floor. There was one position where both her and Burton were on the floor, you know, wrestling for that ball to give them an extra possession. Those are the things that you appreciate. So Gonzaga's going to improve to, oh, sound mine with a tip on the shot. Gonzaga's going to improve to 18 and 2 on the year. As here we got a foul. They'll be 5 and 0 to start conference play. Minder, their next conference date, they'll go on the road next week. They'll be at Santa Clara, a team they just beat 87-49. That'll be next Thursday and then 
San Francisco, a team they have not played that has had, looked pretty good so far this year. That'll be next Saturday. Taylor Dalton at the free throw line. Can't get that one to go. She's just shy of a season high as well. She had 19 points in their game against Cal. If she hits this, it's at 17. She's able to. Couple of possessions left in this one as it has been a great performance from the Zags. They never trailed in this game. They got out to an early lead. They were up 14 at halftime, even though head coach Lisa Fortier wished it were more. <laughs> I've got to think she's going to be happy here as it's going to be close to a 30 point margin of victory. Here's Esther Little. And Zariah Alcuso picks up the foul as she swipes at Esther's hand there. Shot clock will still be on, so the Zags will have to either take one more shot or take the violation. 29 seconds, or 30 seconds remaining in the game, 20 on the shot clock. Here's Bree, and they'll get Destiny Burton for a moving screen here. That'll be a turnover. Doesn't like the call, but maybe up 29. Don't argue about it too much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Again, something special this season for the Zags and head coach Lisa Fortier. There's a lot of season left to go, and you don't want to start talking about March while it's still January, but it's going to be interesting to see what this team can do down the stretch. But like we said, a lot of a lot of regular season left to go. Yeah, and that, but you got to talk about March a little bit because that's what you're working for, right? Absolutely. So you got to keep that as your goal. And this is a team that knows that it's got something special. That's why all these returners came back, right? Um, and they're enjoying it. They're having a blast out there with each other. 89-60, the final score. Gonzaga extends their win streak to 12. Just looking at some of the performers. I mean, obviously, Kaylin Trong, 25 points. Simon Egypt with 22. Brenna Maxwell with a quiet 14, if you can phrase it that way. We'll, <laughs> we'll hear from one of the players here coming up as the Zags go through the happy handshake line. And again, just thinking back to last year, I believe we were doing the game together when uh, the, the senior class, the Trongs, Eliza yeah. Hollingsworth, Brenna Maxwell, announced that they'd be coming back. This is what you envision yes. when you make that decision. A team like this, with this level of talent, with this so much ahead of them, so much to still lie in, it, you know, so much for them left to accomplish. Yeah, and the chemistry with each other. They are enjoying each other. They're having fun, um, and they're working. They are continuing. They've got that desire to continue to get better. Absolutely. Waiting here for our player of the game, which will be Kaylin Trong, I believe. So we'll hear from A.J. Howell here in a minute. But just what a performance by her in this game. Coming off your first career, double-double with 10 assists. You come out, you have another great game sharing the ball, but you also knock down a few threes. All right, time to announce tonight's player of the game presented by A to Z Rental. No job too big or too small. With eight convenient locations, we rent everything. Let A to Z Rental be your most valuable player. AJ, ours is Kaylin Trong. All right, Kaylin, last game it was a double-double. Today, 25 points, seven three-pointers. Has something changed recently? What's been clicking? Um, honestly, not much. I just uh, trying to find my teammates and do like score, score whenever my team needs it. So that's honestly always been a part of the plan. And uh, I guess it's just shining through a little bit today. <laughs> So you, I believe this was your 145th game with the Zags. You are at the top of the list for players that have played the most games here. What does it mean to you to put that jersey on? Um, it means a lot. Like It just means uh, family. Zag, being a Zag is just, I can't even describe. There's not enough words to describe how much it means being a Zag. And uh, just being able to play in front of people, in front of the stadium. 145 games is a lot. I feel a little old. Um, but uh, honestly, I'm just grateful, forever grateful for this uh, this, the fans, I'm forever grateful for the coaches, my teammates. Uh, I love, I just love getting on this court and playing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congrats on the win. Thank you, thank you. AJ, thank you very much. Steph, just one quick thought before we get out of here on this game. They're a load. This they team are. is a 